Madam, shall we start the class, madam? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, a very good evening to one and all. Uh, before starting the session, uh, I request all the students uh, to please keep your uh, audio in mute so that it will not cause uh, any disturbance uh, to the class. Uh, so, today's lecture is on um, banana crop improvement, breeding approaches by Dr. S. Bakirani, madam. A principal scientist, agricultural biotechnology, ICR, NRCB, Trichy. So on behalf of College of Horticulture, Dr. YSR H.U. Uh, Venkatramana Gudem, uh, organizing uh, committee, as well as the students, I welcome you to the session, madam. Uh, so it is a great pleasure for me to introduce Dr. S. Bakirani, madam, a principal scientist, uh, ICR, NRCB, Trichy, who has completed her BSc AG, MSc AG and PhD in uh, plant breeding and genetics from uh, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. She is recipient of university gold medal and also award in the field of plant breeding and genetics. Uh, she did his, uh, her uh, postgraduate, uh, post sorry, post doctorate on uh, biotechnology at Madurai Kamraj University, Madurai on uh, DBT fellowship. And Dr. S. Bakirani, madam, started her career from Cardamom Research Station. Uh, Kerala Agricultural University. Later, she joined as senior scientist at uh, ICR NRCB Trichy during 2007. During her career at uh, KAU, she was responsible in releasing uh, three small cardamom varieties, namely PV2, PV3, and PV5 as uh, a principal breeder. These varieties are popular among the farming community uh, for their drought tolerance and high yields. Uh, with potential market value, which also improved the livelihood of farming communities in Kerala. She is pioneer in establishment of uh, somatic embryogenesis and genetic transformation in uh, small cardamom. During her career at uh, ICR and RCB, she was involved in releasing of three banana varieties at national level and two varieties for Tamil Nadu state, uh, which fetch high demand for high yield, salt tolerance, short duration, and dwarf nature. She is also responsible for developing fusarium wheat resistant genetic stocks, uh, which are being utilized for breeding program at national and international level. Her intervention in developing transgenic banana, uh, CV Grand 90, fortified with pro-vitamin A, is in advanced stage of testing, which is the first of its kind in India. Her major contribution of developing pro-vitamin A enriched dessert bananas uh, has immense scope to solve the problem of hidden hunger in developing countries. She has simplified the banana breeding methodologies by developing a tissue culture protocol for multiple shoots from single embryo and developed a software-based breeding tracker, which is highly uh, helpful to preserve the breeding information without any time restriction. Her, her contribution in developing quality planting material using bioreactors and farmer-friendly macro propagation techniques are well appreciated and adopted by tissue culture industries and farming community. So for her outstanding contribution in plantation and fruit crops improvement in India, Indian Academy of Horticultural Sciences honored Madam with IAHS Fellowship in Fruit Science during 2020. She has 24 years of research experience in the field of horticultural sciences and contributed totally 87 research articles, five books, and six book chapters, one patent, nine popular articles, and six technical bulletins. Dr. S. Bakirani has been invited as a resource person by international forums, INI BAP, Biodiversity International, ISHS, PAG, etc., and World Banana Scientific Community, IATA, NARO, uh, for uh, presenting papers and also for group discussions. 
So with this brief introduction, I would like to invite once again, Dr. S. Bakirani, Madam, and uh, Madam, please uh, continue the lecture. Thank you, Madam. Yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. First of all, I would like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to give the lecture on reading approaches on Baran. So good evening to everyone. So uh, I think have you uh, listened to the topic of uh, Dr. Uma that is banana biodiversity. So with, with the biodiversity only, we can go for the breeding approaches. So now I am showing the slides. Is it, uh, is it okay? Yes, madam. Uh, if yeah. it is in slide mode, it will be yeah. like. I think now it is in slide mode. So this is the total banana diversity in, in all over India. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. It is not in slide mode, madam. We Even now, it is, it is not in slide mode? No, madam. It is not visible. Oh, what mm -hmm. happened? But for me, it is looking like slide mode. Now it is okay? Still, it is not in slide mode, but uh, it is clearly visible only. Is it okay? Hey, you know, a problem or problem. Or better to stop that and uh, again uh, reopen it, madam. Stop that. Net problem. Now is it visible in a uh, full slide mode? Slides are moving on, ma'am. No, it is uh, in the slide banana diversity slide. You can see, but uh -huh. not in slide. But it is clearly visible only, madam. You can carry on. Okay. No, now we are moving the slides. Is it okay? Next slide, could you see? No, madam. Now it is okay. Classification of cultivated bananas? No, we are still uh, seeing only banana diversity slide. Madam. What happened? Ma'am, we are getting the waiting room messages. Can you please hide that? Pardon? Uh, we are getting the waiting room messages. The students are coming now. Uh, okay. I have is, uh, given Pomo's permission. No? That's why. Yeah. Maybe I will. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. <coughs> yeah. Is that a man? No, 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 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Ma'am, there is an option in the slide show at the top of the slide, menu bar. Hmm. We can click it, ma'am. Is it is it moving? No, ma'am. It is not moving. No, madam. What happened? Yeah, and uh, is it to open like a certain thing? You see, ma'am. Uh, okay. I give some card. Is it moving? Share Yes, madam. Yes, okay. Okay, but if you are going for full screen mode, it is not uh, moving. Okay. So, so you have to bear with me. There is no other way. I don't know what is the technical problem. Yes, yes. Is it moving? Is it moving? Yes, madam. Now it is okay? Uh, we are seeing first slide, madam. Banana improvement. Oh. Oh. I'll go open it. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Or madam, will you share PPT to me? So I, that I... Yeah, now we see to opening. Is it okay? It's moving? Yes, madam. We could see second one. Yes, oh. yes. Ah, then okay. The other way, we have to go with this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Not yeah. Okay. Good evening to everyone. Sorry for the inconvenience made by us. Mm, first, I would like to uh, thank the, all the organizers for inviting me to provide a lecture on this uh, banana breeding approaches for uh, improvement on banana. So, as I told you earlier, banana diversity is the base for any improvement of uh, a crop. So, in, uh, in, in, uh, at, uh, in uh, universal level, nearly 3,000 banana accessions are available, of which nearly 30 to 40 accessions are in edible natures. Most of them are wild type and sometimes it, it won't be taste for uh, edible purpose. But we are having an, an, an enormous number of uh, that is accessions, which is having different biotic, abiotic stresses and unique traits they are having. So we have to conserve these biodiversity. So whenever any new crisis like by a new uh, biotic stresses or bi abiotic stresses occur, we can exploit this diversity for in banana improvement program. So while going for this one, what banana means there are lot, based on classification, we can classify it into three types. One is desert type and booking type and plantain type. Based on the consumer uh, preferable, we are classifying this one. Of which desert type, different genomic groups are there. And then there is AA, triploid, diploid, and uh, uh, interspecific hybrid, intraspecific hybrids. Everything is available in desert type. Similarly, in cooking type also, ABB and AA, BBB types are there. In plant type, only one genomic groups are available, that is AAB. So before going for any breeding, first we have to understand the distribution of the genomic, uh, that is uh, species, wild species, as well as the uh, accessions. So it's, uh, everyone knows that our present day commercial cultivars are the derivative of intraspecific hybrid, that is AA or AAA, as well as interspecific hybrids of Musa accumulata as well as Musa bulbisiana. So we have to look for the distribution of Musa accumulata and Musa bulbisiana. We see the Musa accumulata, it is more or less spread in all over the uh, that is uh, continent, as, as Africa, that is uh, Africa, South America and uh, North America, in India, Southeast Asia, Australia, etc. But this Busa Balbisiana is uh, mostly distributed only in these uh, regions, Papua New Guinea, Malaysia, Indonesia, like these regions, and the part of the Southeast Asia. But by the natural interspecific between these Musa accumulata and Musa Balbisiana, we are having a lot of accessions with a different genomic group. So it, it has been how it has been evolved. So by uh, um, we are assuming that there is Musa accumulata, we can say uh, earlier it might be a oil type. Oil type means it's nothing but the seeded type. So we won't use it for the consumer, uh, that is uh, uh, edible purpose. But due to this uh, natural ev evolution, they become a pathologic RP. And the AA types are edible uh, diploids are there. 
sometimes the body polyploidization will occur that how it is occurred that i will explain in the next slides so due to the polyploid this aa will become a triple uh, aa become a triple a or um, uh, that is tetraploid they are 4a and while crossing this in between by natural cross between this tetraploid or triploid and as well as the diploid they might produce the triploid plants triploid so this triploid normally it's not even a part of carpic in nature. It won't develop a seeds and it is a male sterile in nature. This edible triploid, if you cross with the wild banana, BB accessions, BB means normally we can say that Valbisiana species, which is <coughs> hardy in nature and having a most of that is uh, resistant traits for biotic and diabetic uh, stresses. So while crossing between these triple A with the BB, we can get different groups of genomic groups. This may occur uh, earlier days, they have, it has been occurred due to the by natural hybridization. So that we are, nowadays we are enjoying the lot of edible varieties with different tastes as well as different size and different color. Also. So by using this one, we are now interested in developing a conventional method that is natural artificial hybridization we are doing. And we are trying to improve banana to get more adult advantages straight. Uh, to improve their production and productivity. So as I told, how it is the polyploid might have occurred by naturally. So due to the natural phenomenon, like that is pre-meotic doubling or pre-mature cytokinesis or mutation in synapses, lack of spindle fiber segregations as well as post-meotic fusions. This may be the reasons for developing a meotic abnormalities. So moving to this biotic abnormalities, due to the form is, uh, instead of forming of the N gametes, it may produce the unreduced gametes like 2N or 3N. So this, by this way only, it may produce the polyploid. While crossing these 2N with the N gamete, then that might produce the, uh, that is 3N uh, triploid plants. So this may be the possible uh, reasons for the abnormal, biotic abnormalities. How it, ha it can be, it could be occurred whether it is a genetics or environment. Everyone is this saying both genetic factors and environmental factors are influencing the development of this unreduced gametes, that is meiotic abnormalities. For example, in the case of genetic factors, we can say that the genes that code for proteins regulating meiosis, if there is any changes occurred, so there is a chance of getting the chromosomal abnormalities. This may be due to irregular and as well as the irregular pairing. For example, if you are using the A genome and B genome, ASP, uh, Musa Cumulata and Musa Balbisiana are hybridizing. So they are totally different. So there won't be a chance of occurring of parents, pairing. So in that case, there is a chance of getting the doubling of these uh, uh, the chromosomes. So, and another one is environmental factors, temperature, wounding, as well as the water and nutrient stress. These are all due to these stresses. They might, there is a chance of getting the doubling of the chromosomes. So this is the uh, 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 how the poly polyparization may occur in the banana, banana species we are telling. So how it could occur, uh, how with the different genomic group it may occur. For example, in Musa accumulata, due to polyploidization, uh, that is unreduced gamete formation, AA gamete will also form. If it is a reduced gametes, A gametes will occur. Similarly, for Musa Balbisian also, we, we, you might have this, uh, get two types of gametes. One is unreduced gametes, another one is reduced gametes. So by the uh, interspecific hybridization between these two, there is a combination of different, uh, that is, uh, for example, if you are having unreduced gametes of AA, Musa Cumulata, as well as BB, there is a chance of getting A as well as BB. This type of combinations will occur. Sometimes this unreduced gamete, uh, reduced gametes fusion will produce a diploid, and unreduced gametes with the reduced gametes will produce a triploid. So these are all the possible combination through which we might have this. Uh, uh, we are using different, uh, having the different ploidy in commercial cultivar as well as the wild species. So normally, uh, how to improve banana breeding? As uh, as we studied in uh, all the species, that is all the crops. In banana breeding also, it is possible to improve the banana through introduction, clonal selection, hybridization and selection, mutation breeding, transgenic approach, as well as gene editing. Now, this is a, not coming under the transgenic approach. Nowadays, it is called as a non-transgenic crop also. So here, the best approach is, uh, the, that is, uh, now I am going to detail, the exp giving the detailed explanation about the hybridization and selection. Uh, and other things every, is, uh, uh, as usual, what, what, in the, what we are using in other crops, the same thing only we are here for, we are following. So I am in, uh, concentrating only on conventional breeding approach through hybridization. 
<clears throat> so before that, so for a small introduction, I am uh, here to, that uh, first I told clonal selection is the one of the breeding approach in banana. The best example is Udayam, Kaveri Udayam. It is uh, released from ICR NRCB. It is a selection from land race of Kantali. So though we have identified Kantali is the best one, so among this, we have identified the high yielding clones and we have multiplied and we are evaluating in different agroclimatic conditions. So it is performing a stable yield in all the agroclimatic conditions. So it has been released as a central variety. And the main uh, advantage of this variety over the Kantali is it is a suitable for long distance transport because it is having the cylindrical bunches, whereas Kantali is not a cylindrical uh, in shape. So this is the main advantage and the TSS content is higher, that is 32 degree bricks. And the nowadays in uh, India, that is a high demand for this Udayam is there for export market. The next one is Kaveri Harita. It is also a selection from the farmer's field. And uh, due to the high yielding, we have identified this one as the best one. And the main advantage of this one, it is a stable yield in both main as well as the Ratun crop. And uh, as well as... <coughs> And the fruits has been elongated and uh, ended with the pointed tip. So this is the unique traits of this harita. So these are all based on the clonal selection. So next one is introduction. So normally uh, uh, interna uh, international transit center Belgium, they are collecting different diversity from all over the uh, world and they are maintaining in the tissue culture laboratories and they are also having the database. So depends upon our need, if we are giving uh, uh, intent to them and if we are requesting through uh, NBPGR, they will send the material and we can evaluate under Indian climatic conditions and the best one can be used for the commercial access. So of which we have identified this Kaveri Kalki, it is a Pisangava group, nothing but this uh, Karpuravalli type and this have been identified for its dwarf nature. Normally, uh, the three meter above three meter height is the Karpuravalli. So, and the duration is also more than 15 months. But this dwarf Kaveri Kalki is 12 months old, and the height is also uh, lesser uh, than, uh, than this normal Karpuravalli. That is 2.4 meter height only is there. So, this can be highly suitable for the cyclone prone area, and no probing is required for this Kaveri Kalki, and it can be used for the high density planting system. And since it's a short duration crop, it, it can be amenable for the annual cropping system. So, the, uh, but it is a highly fertilizer responsive and water responsive. So, whenever you are giving more input, you will get the high uh, yield in from this cavericle. Then, uh, so this already told, since it's a dwarf in nature, we have experienced that it can, these plants can be uh, withstand this uh, wind uh, uh, as well as the cyclone prone area. And next one is Kaveri Saba. This is also, it is a cooking type in nature. We can use it for the both culinary purpose as well as desert type, but mainly using for the culinary purpose. And it is highly suitable for saline, sodic soils. And the under marginal soil, it is performing well and tolerant to drought also. This is also one of the introduction we have identified from the ITC collections. So another one is Kaveri Kanya. This is also introduction, introduced variety. And this is also dual purpose variety. This can be highly recommended for homestead garden because it is having the extended harvest. Uh, so it, it is recommended for uh, that is a backyard gardens. Then another one is Kaveri Sugandam. So apart from the clonal selection, even tissue culture uh, plants also, we are getting a lot of variations due to not only for the uh, continuous subculturing and due to the BAP uh, activity, if it is more, there is a chance of getting some variations. If it is a desirable variations, that can be used for crop improvements. So in that also, the best example is Kaveri Sugandam. This has been derived from the uh, Karuwalai Walai, which is highly resistant to uh, humusial use part. So when we multiplied, the, this is we have identified from Kohli Hills that we have multiplied and again we have shifted to this uh, Kohli Hills area and found that among more than 2,000 planters uh, distributed to the farming community of which one has been identified the high yielding one. So that is nearly 40 to 45 kg per bunch we have identified. So again we have collected the suckers from this one and mass multiplied and again distributed to the farming community. So now they are getting high yield from this. Uh, uh, that is, this has been released as a Kaveri Sugandam. And now it is, uh, farmers are very much interested to cultivating this Kaveri Sugandam instead of Karuwale. So, this is one of the main uh, advantage of 
identifying the guest somacron uh, varieties and another one is selection so uh, now uh, that is um, uh, everyone knows that tr4 is the highly uh, devastating disease in, in, in not only in india all over the world so in thailand what they have done in the uh, tissue culture field they have uh, in the vast area they have made a screening and identified that two are ex exhibiting the high yielding one there is no symptom of this foc feature uh, uh, so they have i, I, I uh, collected the suckers from these resistant uh, DC, DC culture plants, Cavendish plant, and they have mass multiplied and again they have distributed to the farmers. And they found that there is no variation. So all are showing the resistance for this LTR4. So now they, they have aggressively propagated this uh, GCPCV218. And uh, uh, nowadays it is uh, instead of Cavendish normal grand name, now everyone is wants to uh, raise this uh, GCPCV218 for this resistant nature. So uh, whatever the till date, uh, what I have shown in the slides, what are the existing uh, variability available that only we are exploiting. But now we can also create variability to improve the Barana varieties. So for example, there are a lot of, uh, that is demands are there, depends upon the uh, depends the season as well as the location, as well as the need. Nowadays, for every uh, two, three years, so new races are coming. So in that day, in that case, we have to go for a conventional breeding approach. So what are all the advantages uh, that is how the traits to be improved that I have uh, 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 explained here. So that is biotic stresses, aerobatic stresses, as well as quality and fruit saturating, uh, as well as the high yielding dwarfism, short duration, everything. But one cannot accumulate, accumulate all this desirable trait into a single cultivar. So another one is we have to prioritize for which we have to give more emphasis for breeding method. So in that, the first term is fusory mill. So we have to concentrate more for, for research should be carried out on this improvement of banana for fusory mill. And another one is the like, uh, the threats of farming system. Uh, this, so uh, uh, the yearliness, no office of under, it, is, we, it, it could be managed, manageable one. But we, uh, developing a fusory mill resistant is the need of the hour. So we, we are mainly focusing on developing a new varieties with resistance. So how we can improve through conventional weeding approach? Everyone have tasted the banana and we enjoyed that without any seeds, that is because of the pathnocarpic nature. Then without seeds, how we can improve the banana? So that is the main question. So fortunately, there are some residual female fertility is there. So that we are planning to exploit to improve that pathnocarpic fruits. So normally this is the seed, that is a seeded nature. This is the oil type. It is having resistant to biotic and diabetic stresses. But whereas in case of arthrocarpic fruits, that is commercial varieties, they are highly susceptible to most of the pestilences. So our main interest to interest here is we have to transfer this desirable trait from the wild species to the commercial cultivar. So there are so many uh, problems is that that we have to improve before going for the normal breeding techniques. So first one is we are having very less number of seeds in case of normal hybridization procedure. So how to improve this one? Every compatibility, everything we have to study. So here I am explaining about limited success in conventional breeding. What are all the reasons we are facing to develop a banana through conventional breeding approaches? So main thing is, since most of the crops are triploid as well as interspecific diploid, that is AB in nature, most of the commercial cultivars are sterile in nature for both the female and male. So low female fertility as well as the germination is also poor. Though seed sets are, are there, but seed germination is very poor. And another one is no narrow genetic base. Since most of the commercial cultivars are having uh, susceptible to biotic and diabetic stresses and having no narrow genetic bases, so we have to search for the diverse uh, pro, uh, that is uh, species or accessions which are having resistant to other patient diseases. Then limited knowledge on crop genetics, whether the particular trait, the inheritance pattern of the trait is not uh, that much not studied since we could not be able to develop a mapping population. And whether it is a resistant, uh, that is dominant gene, recessive gene, or it is single gene control or two gene control, it is very difficult. And so that is also, we are nowadays, we are getting slowly, we are uh, improving that uh, knowledge on uh, inheritance with the new advanced technologies. And 99% of the hybrid progeny are poor performance. That is also very drawback in case of banana breeding. And longer duration crops and quicker evaluation, yeah, minimum 18 months, we have to wait for evaluating a single crop. So single season. So this is also very much uh, problem one. And occurrence of BA, integration of BSV virus, 
uh, in uh, that is uh, banana it is also a great threat and threat to the banana breeding so before going for <coughs> so as i told uh, the what are the female uh, residual fertilities that that we are planning to exploit here so before that as a student i want to uh, for you i want to explain what are all the uh, that is banana flower uh, inflorescence uh, everything so basic information on this is, this thing is very much essential for the breeder and here it is the spadix the banana uh, inflorescence we can say that spadix and initially first if it is a, a bunch throw we can be a flower throw we can see that it's a female piece then afterwards after five to six hands or depends upon the varieties it will vary then you will get a neutral phase here then last phase is the male phase so we have we we have to take the pollen from this male phase of the female that is the male parent and that pollen could be uh, dusted over the stigma of the female phase so this is the main thing um, uh, we are doing here so here this female flower the main difference between the female and male flowers here this ovary extended ovary will be present here in female flowers but there is no this ovary is absent in uh, that is um, uh, immature ovule uh, ovary will be here so that is the main difference between the male and female flowers so here the stigma receptivity is the main point so the, that uh, we have to study when we, it will be very depends upon the varieties to variety so we have to identify the best stigma receptivity stage for identifying the uh, crossing uh, pollination type. And another one is this is the male flower. Before selecting the male flower, though the pollen will be there, we have to identify, we have to know, know the information on whether the pollen are able to germinate as well as they are whether they are in pollen fertile in nature or not. So uh, uh, while identifying the male parents, we have to identify whether it is a polyniferous in nature and having the potential of high germination of pollen. So these two information are very much important. So, so we have to have a basic information on seed setting ability of the female parent as well as the pollen germination percentage of the male parent. So these two information is very much essential. And these are all the how the first bract will not show any, will not have any flowers. From the first, the second bract on onwards, it is showing the female flower, it is having the female flowers. This can be used for our hybridization program. So this is the techniques. Oh, yeah. Here, there are another important thing is, I told the stigma receptivity is the very important, uh, that is a criteria for getting the seed set. So here, flower opening time, there is 5 p.m. to continue throughout the night. Flower opening, though it is occurred between 5 p.m. to the uh, late night, the pollination time, the best pollination time is 7 to 10 million. And based on the research, we could find that even one day before flower opening, as well as up to three days also, uh, the, after the antheses, uh, the successful fertilization, uh, they have been identified. But the number of seed set is very less while going for the second and third day. So at the time of, on the day of antheses is the best one for having the uh, more number of seed sets. So that has been identified through most uh, uh, repeated research. And uh, after the pollination, the main, main uh, pollination time is 7 to 8, 10 a.m. And after that, after pollination, we have to cover the bunches with the cotton bags and uh, spraying these pollinated bunches with the water so that we can develop a humidity that uh, conditions we can create so that the germination of the pollen will be, we can enhance. And for germinating the pollen, we are also using the pollen germination media before pollination. So we are spraying the pollen germination media in the stigmatic regions. Then we are pollinating. After that, we are covering the uh, pollinated uh, bunches with the cotton bags. So this is the normal procedures we are following for time decision. <coughs> so the main problem is the time taken to develop a desirable varieties. Why it is the time taken? Normally, for, for any crop, nearly we used to say that 8 to 15, 10 years it will take. Here also, since it is an annual crop, nearly 14 to 15 years are, uh, we are needed to release a hybrid variety. But before that, we should have a enough number of female parent as well as the male parent, which is having the, uh, the desirable traits. Because most of the commercial cultivars are sterile in nature, there is no seed set. So first, we have to improve the seed set nature of the female parent and as well as the improve the, the since we, here we are doing, we could not go for the any back crossing, back crossing since it is a clonally propagated crop and the breeding is, uh, that is hybridization is very difficult in banana. So what are the traits we have to improve in the male parent? 
that we have to accumulate. We can promoting all the genes, all the resistant genes in a single uh, male parent. So then it even can improve more number of desirable traits in a commercial cultivar. So these uh, pre-breeding like, uh, research is very much essential. So the time taken to develop a desirable varieties can be reduced by developing a pre-breeding lines. So as I told, this is already I have explained, that is database and compatible parental combinations for seed setting, that information is very much essential. We have to have a list of male fertility, that is male fertile accessions and seed set details. So those seed sets are there, there won't be any embryo at all and there won't be any, uh, that is endoscopy. So in that case, the embryo germination has been affected. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, some disturbance are there. That is the reason I asked. So, comfortable. Hey, please, please keep your audio in mute. Sorry, madam, for the disturbance. Okay. <coughs> So, compatible parental combination, that database is very much essential. So, see, those seed sets are there. NB germination is the main criteria for developing more number of progenies. So, this is this information we have. So, enhancing the hybrid seed production. So, now, nowadays, what we are doing, we are spraying the anti axin to enhance the seed set. As well as, but here, one failure we have obtained. Though, number of seed sets has been enhanced, but the number of uh, seeds with the embryo, that is on par with that of normal hybridization without any anti axin spray. So there is no, uh, that is advantage over this one. But now we are using the pollen germinated, that is uh, pollen germinated media, PGF, that we are spraying so that we can enhance the germination of the pollen so that it can reach the ovule at, uh, within one day. So that also we are following. Then another one is to increase the germination percentage, we are treating the seeds. Uh, I, so that is extracted seeds with the GA3 treatment and then we are going for the embryo cultures. There is no other way. If you are, you are directly sowing in the potting mixer, we are the germination person, the germination is prolonging and we have to wait for sometimes even for the six months or one year or later also we are getting the uh, germination. So to avoid that, now we are doing for going for the embryo cultures as well as now we recently gone for the multiple suit formation also that I will explain in the next slides. And we have also developed to confirm the integration of A and B genome in the marker we have developed for confirming the integration of A and B genome in the hybrids. <coughs> so this I have already explained and I think need not to explain this one. So this is the embryo rescue or embryo culture we can say. So first we start with the embryo rescue. So 60% maturity we have tried, but there is no germination at all. So next we have find out that 80% maturity to 100% maturity is giving the best result. So we have to isolate this uh, embryo. This is the endosperm, this white portions. So this is this one we have isolated this embryo alone. And this is the embryo of this banana seed. And that has been uh, germinated in the uh, germinator that is uh, in the, uh, the specific media, embryo culture media. And now we are uh, we are using this embryo culture for developing more number of progenies. So we got more success nowadays in this, in this one. Then another one is in the normally embryo cultures so from a single embryo, we will get only a only one seedlings. So if you want to evaluate in more number, we have to wait for two to three years to get more number of success. Or, through suit tip cultures. So to avoid that, to reduce the breeding cycle, what we are doing, if at the time of embryo germination itself, if we are developing more number of plantlets from a single embryo, there is a chance of reducing the breeding durations so that we can get more number of plantlets that can be used for evaluation in for the multipurpose. Directly, we, uh, the, at the same time, we can go for the pot culture as well as the field evaluation for identifying their yield potential. So this is the best approach we have the developed that is multiple suit production from a single embryo. These techniques also we are following nowadays to reduce the breeding cycle. And as I told, pre breeding line is very much essential uh, for uh, that is banana. This is the unique one uh, when compared to the other crop uh, because since it is a polyploid in nature, to develop a triploid, we have to develop, uh, we have to have different strategies. So the main strategy is tetraploid into diploid breedings. So how to develop a tetrapoid? So normally naturally occurring tetrapoid can also be used, but our interest is if you want to develop a commercial cultivar, so no other way we have to develop a tetrapoid of this commercial cultivar. How we can go for the development of tetrapoids from a commercial cultivar? So the first one is 
So normally, if it is in diploid in nature, for example, A B it is a kundan in nature, and B B is a, it is a uh, commercial car, it is a oil species. Here we are not showing that much concentration, but A A it is a commercial cultivar that uh, cultivar rows. This these are all the uh, common commercial cultivar that can be multiplied. <coughs> How we can uh, that how we can uh, develop into polypride through chromosome doubling, polycysteine or oraisaline can be used so that if it is a AA, we can get a 4A tetraploid uh, plantlets. And if it is a AB in nature, there is a kundan type, naipu one, everything or AB in nature. If you are uh, uh, treating this AB with the polycysteine or oraisaline treatment, we can get the chromosome doubled AB, naipu one, for example, AABB. So this can be used for say tetraploid. So it has the different potential. That is normally this AA and BB are sterile in nature for both female and male. But if you are developing into a fertile one, it will develop a tetraploid plants or become a sterile, fertile for both female and male. Then another one breeding activity by through unreduced gamete that also one hour we can exploit. Most of the tetraploids, sometimes it will produce the rarely produce the unreduced gametes, that is the 2 and 1. So that can be used for our breeding purpose to develop a tetraploid. So these that are unreduced gametes, for example, 3N, if we cross it with the diploid, we can get more number of progenies with a different ploidy in nature, of which we can develop and identify the tetraploid hybrids, and that can be used for further breeding program. So these are all the ways of the breeding, uh, developing a breeding lines in. Uh, banana. So, this is the main uh, difference between the other uh, crop species as well as the banana breeding program. And uh, that is, uh, this is the best example what we have done for uh, AB, it is a naipu one tetra, that is a naipu one. It is highly sterile in nature as well as susceptible to FOC race one, as well as race four. So, now what we have to do, we have to improve this variety for resistance. We have to set, get, get, set the seeds, uh, set, seed setting ability we have to enhance. So for that, what we have done, we have uh, make uh, that is uh, that picture is not that. We have developed a embryogenic cell suspension culture. So that cell, uh, ECS line has been treated with the polycystin or orisalin. Then we got a double tetraploid that we have evaluated in the field condition and through flow cytometer as well as the morphological traits, we could identify that they are tetraploid in nature. So that tetraploid. <laughs> Here you can differentiate between the control as well as tetraploid. Though yield is less, it has the potential of high pollen germination as well as the more seed set. So now we are using this tetraploid for in Naipon improvement program. We made so many crosses and now we got this much seeds. And with that, the seeds has been germinated and found that most of different types of uh, that is uh, uh, genomic group as well as the ploidy level progenies have been obtained through. The crossing chromosome double night one with the other diploid species. So uh, instead of going for the, the chromosome doubling, if it is a triploid in nature, by exploiting the unreduced gamete also, we can develop the tetraploids. So we have this bunkela, chinia, everything are triploid in nature. It has been crossed with the different resistant lines for FOC race one. There is cultivar rose and Calcutta 4 and Bisang Jaji. And we could develop a tetraploid. But normally in tetraploid, yield will be always less. So, but it, this can be used in a breeding as a use as a pre-breeding lines to further improving this pisang of our group uh, projects. So, the, up to the till the time I explained about how to develop a tetraploid. The next one is we have to improve the diploids. So, how why we have to go for the diploid and improve the diploids because most of the male parents are sterile in nature. Though it is a resistant, that particular trait cannot be transferred to this commercial cultivar because of the sterile in nature. So, first one is we have to improve the polyniferous nature of this one. So, we have to cross this uh, resistant lines with the polyniferous nature so that we can enhance the pollen, uh, pollen germination as well as the pollen content of this male parent. Apart from that, we have to permit all the desirable genes into a single uh, for male parent, then it can be used as the universal male parent for hybridizing with the any type of commercial cultivars. So this is the main uh, uh, the, the, this agenda. So based on that, we have to we, we are trying to develop improve the diploids for accumulating more number of resistance in a single diploid along with the polyniferous nature. So this is our main. Based on that, we have developed so many hybrids. And uh, with that is a uh, deployed hybrids with, with desirable uh, this one characters. For example, 
this one progeny 97 it is uh, having polyniferous as well as uh, polens uh, that is uh, patrocarpic in nature this is diploid in nature and this can be used for uh, main parent for transferring the resistant trait that is a series for here with them into pisangolilin though it is a triploid into pisangolilin that is a triploid into diploid we are getting the diploid progenies this is also resistant to foc race one so but it is moderately resistant but this could be used nowadays can uh, cavendish the pollen uh, uh, that is uh, seed setting is very problem so now we, since we are so having the um, progeny with uh, similar to that of the udayam uh, that, sorry udayam cavendish type this could be used as one of the male parent sometimes there is a chance of getting more seed set in case of cavendish type so that that uh, research is going on at icr nrc then another one is but fortunately, we could be able to enhance the uh, carotenoid content also that uh, in depth study genetic inheritance and all we have to study. But fortunately, we got one while crossing this cotia, they said triploid into diploid. We got a 126 microgram of PVA um, that is dry weight of protein A content in this progeny. So this is a high, high yielding and that is nearly 9 to 10 kg. If you are performing that is uh, planting, uh, plantation is good nearly 12 to 13 kg yield we could be able to get from this one so it is having the uh, good characters of carotenoid content so these are all the other uh, improved diploids we have developed through hybridization program so here also we i, I can say that is one interesting example that we can uh, create a uh, uh, that is banana for uh, like the uh, grand name like uh, uh, that is uh, rastali here, unfortunately, we got similar to that of beam coal. Beam coal, it is normally available in the northeast region, but it's having a soft seeded, mostly preferred by the local people. But now we got one open pollinated progeny of subbind to Pisangil. It is the seedless, but it is looking similar to that of beam coal. So this can nowadays, many research is going on through gene editing and transgenic approach and many breeding approaches are going on to develop this beam coal seedless, uh, seedless beam coal development. But fortunately, when we are making different crosses of one dipisanglin, we could develop a seedless beam cortex. So, uh, but it is showing <coughs> a lot of morphology, uh, that is molecular level, a lot of variations is there. Further in-depth study is needed whether, how far it is uh, diverse, diverse from this beam cortex. So, this uh, high conventional breeding approach, we can create new variety, not only new variety, we can also create the existing variety also. So, this is the one best example for that one. And another one is through the into Chandavit. We have identified one uh, new hybrid, which is having a high PVA content in uh, this uh, fruit pulp. So this uh, five fruits is sufficient to meet the daily recommended elements of this one PVA content. The yield is also good here, whereas in case of previous diploid, we could be able to get only 9 kg, but the uh, carotenoid content is very high in this case of diploid. Then we have also developed <coughs> two uh, important Pisangavak-based progenies, that is Chinia into Pisang Jaji, as well as highly resistant Karpur into Pisang Jaji. So these are all highly resistant FOC race one. So these are all tetraploid. This can be used in further breeding program. Or if it is good performing well, we can directly go for the uh, releasing as a variety. Then another one is here. Uh, then I, the, up to this, I explained about how we can improve the Pisangaba group that is Karpur uh, uh, type. Now, we, are, we have also uh, made success on improving the Nendran. Nendran is now our main objective is Nendran is highly susceptible to nematode. So, our main objective is to improve the nematode resistance in Nendran. So, we made process between the Pratisanglin as well as cultivar rows. They are found to be resistant for peak of your resistance. So, we made process and we got different lines, nearly 18 lines we got. And we have characterized all, luckily, all our partner carpet in nature. Here you can see. Cultivar rose and pisanglin are the male parent. Nathan is the female parent. Different types of nearly 18 types of uh, progenies we could be able to obtain from these cross combinations. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, one variety which is a high yielding and a highly, highly consumer preference, it is giving 30 kg bunch weight. Normally, when an endan will produce only 20, uh, that is 20 kg, 18 to 20 kg, but it is giving high yield, that is 30 kg bunch. And it is towards the desert type. It, uh, plantain type means uh, short rich uh, barbara. So that is the reason we are telling this plantain. But this will cross cultivar rose and pisanglin are the desert in nature. While crossing nendran with the desert type, here instead of plantain type, we are getting the desert type banana, the nendran banana here. So this is also one of the advantage here. Instead of mostly this nendran is highly preferred by the Kerala peoples of India. 
but this desert type banana should be highly preferred by all the banana uh, eating people. So I think this will be reach in a, uh, that is very uh, uh, long, uh, 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 liked by uh, many people. And uh, since we, our, uh, our main uh, uh, the interest is to develop a nematode resistance, we identified that five lines, that is a rootless nematode, two are found to be resistance. And here NCR 5, 8, 10 and 18, 21 are found to be resistant to uh, the root lesion nematode. But the yield is less, so we could not directly release the severity. But it is now, again, we are using uh, to uh, backcross with the nandran. That work is going on now. And apart from this, since this nandran is highly suitable for this uh, chips making, so we have also simultaneously evaluated for which variety is highly suitable for the chips preparation. That also, we, since it is a desert type, whether the chips quality is equal to that of Nandran or not, that has been also evaluated. And luckily, we found that NCR2, that is Nandran into cultivar rows, that progeny is showing higher uh, chips recovery percentage than the Nandran. Nandran, it is only 40.6 percentage, but this is one percentage higher than this uh, Nandran variety. So now, though we are aiming for the resistance uh, for nematode, we are also getting some other varieties with uh, high recovery percentage as well as the high carotenoid content desert type also. So these are all the advantages of banana breeding. And another one is improvement of commercial, that is uh, cooking type. Uh, uh, here, Kaveri Saba, it is already we have reached as a variety. And this we want to improve uh, for further uh, appearance, but normally it is, has been rejected by many farmers due to the poor appearance. Uh, uh, so we uh, made process between this Kaveri Sabha and Pisangi, and we got some of the varieties, but more, mostly all the uh, progenies are seeded in nature. So what we have done, the open pollinated, uh, that is uh, the natural crossing seeds we obtained and we may evaluated, of which we found that two are patronocarbic in nature with a high, uh, good cooking quality and uh, stable performance. So these are all these two varieties, uh, there is progeny 959 and 964. So uh, though this 964 is a high yielding uh, one, then this progeny 959, the appearance is very, somewhat poor. So that is the reason we are going for uh, this uh, 959 is the best one. So the large scale evaluation is being uh, conducted in farmer's field. So up to this, I am explained about the conventional breeding approach. Now, the next, I am fastly moving about the mutation breeding as well as the transgenic approach. So, uh, but uh, in general, in conventional breeding, whatever process we are ma making, we cannot uh, develop, uh, improve the uh, single variety, uh, single trait with the background of the commercial cultivar. Because in the, it is a 50 percentage of the gene of a male parent will be contributed in the progenies. So most of the male parent trait will also be involved in this type of uh, the commercial cultivar. So improving a particular variety, especially in case of triple A type, through conventional breeding is very difficult. Whereas in case of Nandran type or ABB type, it is possible. So in case of triple A type, there is no other way. The mutation breeding is the only approach to improve any trace. So now we are having the Kama chamber facilities at our, at our uh, farm, uh, farm, uh, that is, uh, farm premises that we are extensively used for developing a uh, more number of uh, mutant lines so that we can evaluate because nearly 2,000, 3,000 plantlets, uh, mutated plantlets is needed to identify a desirable trait with the in the commercial cultivar. So now we have developed uh, through uh, ECS have been used for mutating with the uh, uh, embryogenic cell suspension lines. Uh, suspension have been treated with gamma, gamma, gamma rays as well as the chemical treatment like EMS. Uh, but we identified some lines which is having resistant uh, to FO series. So this has been not only screened in the in vitro condition, it has been also been evolved in the hotspot area to identify the best performing. That is, apart from the resistance, we should, the yield penalty should not be there. So we have also evaluated in the hotspot area of the race one, uh, the fusary milk uh, infected area, and we identified the best one. So in that, we have identified the one variety, which is in the pipeline. Then another one is, Sometimes we are getting also dwarf type. Normally, dwarf characters in mutation breeding is the uh, in, uh, routine uh, 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 that is advantage of this one uh, in mutation breeding. So in banana also, we got a dwarf mutant. And we are, this has been really uh, yet to be released as a variety. It has been included in the MLT in the IQ trials. So when compared to the that is plant height, this 35.4% lesser uh, height than the normal gradient. 
and also the uh, the distorted crop duration also it has been reduced so another one is this are the mutation breeding and uh, outcome of the mutation breeding then uh, that is this uh, transgenic approach we can go for enhancing the nutrient content as well as to incorporate the resistant genes into the uh, that is commercial cultivars so here uh, <coughs> So we have isolated the gene that is phytoin synthase gene from the osupina. This is nowadays um, many problems are there that is ethics problem are there. If you are taking the gene from other organisms, so there is a lot of problem. So instead of that, if you are taking the gene from the banana species itself, I think we can uh, we can reduce uh, that uh, controversy. We can face the problem of this controversy and ethics problem and all. So we have identified the gene that is phytoids in this gene, which is the one of the precursor of the coronal biosynthesis pathway that has been cloned. And that's been, uh, this clone has been obtained from the James Dale, that is uh, from uh, uh, Queenstown University of Technology, Brisbane. And that ha concept has been used for transferring to the Rastali and granite. Similarly, in uh, that is for enhancing the iron content in uh, that is granite, we have identified the genes from the uh, that is. Uh, um, uh, because uh, nicot, uh, that is a rice and that can be used for this transferring into the granin as well as rastal. So this is the normal protocol we are following. We first we have to develop, we should have a ECS that is embryogenic cell suspension, suspension culture. That ECS has to be um, uh, that is a co-cultivation with this construct and then upon the selection procedure we have to identify the integrated that is you know, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, plantlets that has to be confirmed through PCR as well as the southern. Then field evolve, during field evaluation without the yield penalty, those plants which are producing the high cardinal content, that has to be the further evaluation. So this is the normal procedure we are following in uh, improving the cardinal biosynthesis system, that is uh, improving the pro-vitamin pro D as well as the iron content. This is the transgenic facilities available at the, our uh, ICR NRCB. And this is the James Dale who gave this construct to increase the enhancing the pro vitamin D as well as the iron. He also very much satisfied with the outcome of this result. And uh, as the outcome, we can say that since it is a tenfold higher than this normal granite, and here we can say that nearly two to three granite fruit consumption is very much sufficient to meet the daily recommended allowance of pro vitamin D content. Whereas in case of iron, we have to consume nearly four fruits per day to meet the RDA of IM. So this is the outcome of this project. Now event selection trial is going on to identify the best event. Simultaneously with this uh, uh, experience, now we have identified through transcriptome approach, we have identified different uh, resistant lines, sorry, different resistant genes of which the best resistant gene that is RG2 has been identified. That has been cloned and that's, uh, that has been uh, uh, co-cultivated in the granin uh, ECS. And now it is under evaluation stage uh, for identifying the best transgenic lines for rest, with resistance. So these are all the different breeding methods that we are using, of which conventional method is somewhat different from other crops. So that is the reason I have broadly explained about the conventional breeding. And other, other things under the methodology and everything is the same as that of what we are using in other crops. So thank you so much for your kind listening for my lectures. Thank you so much. If any questions is there, you can ask. Thank you, madam. Uh, students, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask directly by unmuting yourself or you can also post in the chat box. No more questions? Ravish Kumar. Ravish Kumar, you want to say something? You can unmute yourself. Nothing, ma'am. Class was nice. Okay. Thank so you, you are very clear about the banana breeding. Am I correct? Sure. So, yes, shall I ask question then? You are very clear means?
I think it is very clear, madam. That's why nobody has doubts. <laughs> yeah. Madam, this is Ramanandam from ah, Kavur. Yeah, yeah, sir. How are you? Yeah. Fine, fine, madam. Thank yeah. you very much for your uh, very informative lecture. And uh, I think all the students get benefited uh, from okay. your lecture. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Very extensive lecture and uh, very, uh, very useful lecture. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Madam, one of the student uh, posted in the chat box, uh, which banana variety is mostly used in tissue culture program? Tissue culture program? Grand name? But no, here I could not see any questions here in chat box. Oh, she has posted directly to me, madam. Okay, okay. Oh. So which, no, which variety for tissue culture? Yes. Granin. Granin is mostly used. Nearly 52 percentage of the area uh, is cultivated in uh, that is uh, our uh, in India. Granin is cultivating. So mostly nearly 17 percentage of the granin is grown by tissue culture. And uh, rest is red banana, nape one. They are a very minimum number only. But 17 percentage of the granin is uh, being cultivated by tissue culture. Thank you, ma'am. So, if anybody want to ask anything, you please post in the chat box, uh, which is open to everyone, not direct message. So, they are very much interested in tissue culture. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, can, uh, reading is somewhat uh, difficult. Huh? So, earlier it was difficult. Now, with the great uh, effort, uh, we have identified the compatible parentage and identified the female parent, male parent. And so many techniques we have used, we have, we have developed. So with that, we could develop so many varieties nowadays. So in the earlier, BRS1, BRS2, CO1, CO2, these varieties they have released. But in future, near, at frequent interval, we can develop more many varieties. So we are expecting that one. I think uh, there are no questions, madam. Okay, okay. thank you so much. So, uh, Madam, once again, on uh, behalf of organizing committee and students, I express my sincere gratitude and thanks uh, uh, to you, Madam, uh, for accepting our invitation and uh, sparing your valuable time with us, uh, delivering a lecture on uh, banana crop improvement, uh, breeding approaches. Thank you, Madam, for uh, your informative lecture uh, for and also for enriching uh, our students in uh, various uh, banana varieties. Then what are the priorities of banana breeding in India? What are the steps to be taken for more success in the banana breeding? Uh, covering all the breeding approaches and also for clarifying our uh, students' doubts, madam. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I close the session, madam? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you.